Ah, goddamn, f*** you, audio editor slash foley artist. I guess 37 seconds of silence was to f*** me up with his sudden pterodactyl noise. And if so, bravo, in a world where bravo means go f*** yourself. Um, the moon is nowhere near that size relative to the Earth, but whatever you say, supposed serious space movie. Hard to believe any alien life will contact us after hearing this jumbled mass of frequencies. Oh, you're the race that came up with We Built This City? Here's the keys to interstellar travel. Wow, the further out from Earth you go, the more nebula you encounter, and in such tight consecutive formation, too. Entirely too much space travel. I have often thought the entire universe somehow existed in Jenna Malone's head. One of the most infuriating, meaningless movie things ever is her dad moving behind her to fully close the door. Why was the door ajar? Why would Ellie, a presumably smart girl, even begin audio recording without checking all the exits? But if it's so unimportant to her broadcast, why bother showing the dad walking behind to close it? I mean, goddamn, what gives? She has a pretty precise thread of contacts with her radio all around the Midwest, but somehow her farthest one yet goes all the way down to Florida? Baby Steps Radio, maybe Kentucky first before Florida. Young Ellie's genuine radio curiosity nearly turned this space program think piece into Frequency the Little Girl Edition. Guys, I'm getting a weird feeling that one of Sean Bean's characters has died here before. Matthew McConaughey shows up and somehow takes away from this movie. Palmer Johns. Palmer shakes Ellie's hand with sticky Cracker Jack fingers. Red Jeep pulling into hot damn, are all the vehicles in this lot red Jeeps? What is this, Jurassic Park? Got my masters in divinity. Then I dropped out of seminary and went off and did some secular humanitarian work. Wait, you got a master's in divinity and then dropped out of school? Isn't that like quitting the American Ninja Warrior contest after beating the course? I mean, are you a superman of God or not? This movie kind of needs you to pick a side. Young Ellie watches the space with her dad, while next door house arrest Shia LaBeouf is looking at them through binoculars and assessing their murderousness. There would be literally millions of civilizations out there. Well, if there wasn't, it'd be an awful waste of space. Huh, that's exactly what her dad said to her when she was little. And also, f*** you. He died when I was nine years old. I never got to know my mother. Then who took care of you after that? I don't think we hear of an uncle or cousin or anybody who then raised young Ellie during her formative years so that she could keep on this radio for alien life track she set for herself at such a young age. I'll get the medicine. Thankfully for this movie's tension meter, this asshole collapsed on the first floor while his dad medicine is up on the second floor. I won't make fun of her nine-year-old running ability here, because it's hilarious, but then she opens the medicine cabinet, revealing this is a glorious shot where I can't see the camera, even though I should be able to, and ultimately I'm just gonna take a sin off here. Camera pan from multiple prescription bottles to the father-daughter photo is manipulative as hell, dog. Yo, Zemeckis, you are better than this. She's currently worried about how a nine-year-old will be able to keep paying the bills and maintain this house without working five illegal jobs. Hey, maybe if you hadn't been so space-oriented, your dad would still be alive, eh? Sometimes we just have to accept it as God's will. Wow, this priest knew exactly what a nine-year-old needed to hear to completely get over her dad's sudden death. That's amazing! Dad, are you there? You just buried him, girl. Give his spirit time to adapt to the ether and sh Jesus. We could put together a kick-ass ad hoc SETI program. Hey, what are you talking about? You Somehow, even though Drumlins pulled the plug on Ellie's research, she was allowed to continue to do this research without being informed. But they did tell Kent, and he decides the best way to break this news is to stall with, hey, we can do this somewhere else with no money. Don't worry about why I'm telling you this, just get on board with it, damn it. You won't be taken seriously, and your career will be over before it's begun. So what? It's my life! Whoa, I did not know this movie was going to turn into Rebel Without a Cause. Sure, maybe she decides not to call this guy. Okay, whatever. Why does she leave this note here on the nightstand next to a bed she doesn't plan to revisit ever? You're leaving! Throw that personal shit away or else take it with you, right? Hmm, I wonder if Ellie's going to be successful asking for money here. The guy who runs this company had an alien burst out of his chest 18 years ago. Probably not the best place to start. The proposal seems less like science and more like science fiction. Nice line, but you could have deduced that from her pitch package and kept her from ever entering the building and giving this pitch, which suggests you either think she's right or else you just want to go out of your way to embarrass her. You want to hear something really nutty? I heard of a couple guys that want to build something called an airplane. Great, at least playing the someone once built an airplane and everyone thought they were crazy card. It's like every terrible band out there who point to Rolling Stones reviews of Led Zeppelin albums and say, see, they got it wrong then. Who's to say they aren't wrong now? It is literally never a good sign when a movie gives you a four years later title card. This has got to be the least stressful job on the planet. Until 2012, when two assholes made a YouTube channel and started taking pot shots at movies. If I have to go it alone, I'll go it alone. I've done it before. And now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go be angsty at a discount Grand Canyon Gorge, which is conveniently super nearby. Ellie's wondering how in the world a nine-year-old was able to pay the bills and maintain a house without working five illegal jobs. Just in time to save Ellie's second chance at finding alien life. This computer is giving an alarm about a candidate signal, but doesn't give any noise. Because why would anyone not be looking at a monitor in a place like this? Hello, oh, this is 26 no, 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 no. How to keep your audience guessing 101. Have three characters talk at once, all of whom are spewing techno babble right now. Brilliant! <laughs> Netscape. <laughs>
Also, live video this good on Netscape or any browser this early in the Internet's lifespan. You're having sent this announcement all over the world may well constitute a breach of national security. Oh, Typical America. Aliens from outer space say hello and we think we own that Can you clean it up anymore in there? I'm working on it. Ah! Zoom and enhance cliche! Intelligent alien life sends Earth back some instructions with the image of Hitler, because something needs to give James Woods a reason to be even more of a dick in this movie. 20 million people died defeating that son of a bitch, and he's our first ambassador to outer space. She says this like any human had control over what the aliens watched. Also, yeah, he's kind of the defining human of the century, despite being 100% evil. Hey, have you considered the aliens might hate us because of our history? Because it seems totally plausible to me, especially now. Claire Shipman is at the White House. No, she isn't. In fact, I'm not even sure this reporter is real, and whoever's operating the camera is fired. And that he won't be taking any questions from the press. Also, is she filming this as he's walking up here? That's unprecedented access. Robert Zemeckis did this thing with his effects team in Forrest Gump, putting the fictional characters in real footage, and it now feels like a kid who can't stop playing with his new toy. Also, the movie will go on to be 95% absolute fiction, while relying on CGI weirdness like this to establish some semblance of reality. If this discovery is confirmed... Why is the American president giving a speech about a huge scientific finding before it's confirmed? And then Zemeckis performs this kind of neat trick where everybody's in sync with what we see on the TV, but that is so not Bill Clinton in the background. I'm turning you over to the leader of the scientific team that made this remarkable discovery, Dr. David Drumlin. Person who rightfully thinks the other person is talking about him or her and starts walking toward the stage is given a swift rebuttal because life is f cliche. Also, how did Jodie Foster's character ever think she was supposed to speak, to the point she had note cards, given that her boss is ultimately the speaker? This is a great movie moment to show how belittled she feels in general, but makes no sense whatsoever. In 1936, a very faint television signal transmitted the opening ceremonies of the Olympic Games. As and what these aliens did was, they saw this and immediately said, yes, these people need to know how to create a machine that will tackle the complexity of the Einstein Rosen Bridge. Send it back to them now! <laughs> Watching four live news broadcasts at once, all with the sound on, makes no sense at all, goddammit. At least mute two or three of these so you can hear one of them. So it turns out there's life on other planets. Boy, this is really going to change the Miss Universe contest, don't you think? The fast and the contactious. Ah, Jake Busey is even more terrifying than the real Gary Busey. Apparently Ellie's computer back at the hotel is on at all times and gives her a screensaver notification she's got new email. Is this an email? I admit, I lived in 1997. It's tough to confess the truth sometimes. I just don't remember emails being this way ever. You should feel fortunate! He hardly lands for anyone! There's no way a real butler employed by a gazillionaire would ever say this in real life unless the audience needed to know it. Haddon stops this movie dead cold by showing a long biographical video of Ellie, which fills in some tiny gaps as to how smart she is, but does not explain how she kept living in that house at nine years old without working five illegal jobs. Also, where in the f*** did this guy get those home movies of Ellie? At the very least, this guy needs to be investigated for having his employees raid the Arroway estate just to make an Ellie fan video in secret. This guy spends way too many minutes telling Ellie about herself so he can feel omniscient. I guess I should thank you for having bailed me out all that time. I know a good bet when I see one. What, because she's smart? Because she's obsessed? And the actual finding of intelligent life was a miracle. Honestly, this was not a good bet. That's results-oriented thinking. It's like that guy at the poker table who's like, I know I'm beat, but I call your all-in bet because there's that one card in the deck that can save me. And then he hits it and turns and says, I 100% made the correct decision. Clever girl. This movie has the misfortune of coming well after both Total Recall and Jurassic Park, and thus earns a sin for this terribly unoriginal line of dialogue. Uh, there's no reason to believe that their, their intentions are hostile. As James Wood's asshole character will no doubt point out, there's also no reason to believe their intentions are benign. So I guess, sin this for inconsistency and for James Wood's being good at cinema sins, which we hate admitting, to be honest. Why is this asshole allowed in the meeting? And late, no less. And this asshole, too, since he won't even show back up in this movie after this scene. And he's superfluous because Palmer's already here. It should have taken on the form of a burning bush or a big booming voice from the sky. But a voice from the sky is exactly what you found, Dr. Arroway. I wouldn't blame Ellie for killing every man in this movie by the time it's over. Like, somewhere it takes this amazing left turn where Ellie suddenly has those carry powers and she's trapping all those motherfuckers in a gymnasium, setting it on fire and singing Beyonce's Sorry on the way out. She'd know that song because of time travel and shit. In the late 90s, this was some impressive-ass CGI. Today, however, it's sin-worthy. So there. Leave it to the religious to loudly protest an event about a proven alien space signal. Movie inspires Westboro Baptist Church. These religious hecklers are talking only about her scientific findings, and not even one makes a crack about how long she sat in a chair to have her hair done like this. What if science simply revealed that he never existed in the first place? Ellie obviously has no concept of religion because she asks this question of a religious person without a trace of comedy or irony. No, Occam's razor. It's a basic scientific principle. All things being equal, the simplest explanation tends to be the right one. Come on, Ellie. I watched a very detailed video of home movies created by John Hurt that explains how smart you are. This is a simplistic understanding of Occam's Razor, to the point it's not even true. Occam's Razor is a way of reducing the number of hypotheses on a given problem, not the scientific equivalent of the butler did it. Your dad, did you love him? Yes, very much. Prove it. 
Ellie says she'd need proof to believe in God. Then he asks her to prove she loved her dead father, as though the two were in any way related. Proof of God and proof of loving one's dad, assuming either is possible, are two completely different concepts, dude. He just resigned to science advisor. He wants to be the one to go. Tom Skerritt totally just picket-fenced his loyal underling Ellie. Also, why are Drumlin and Ellie even being considered for this travel into space? This is like that Miles Teller Fantastic Four problem, where the guys who made the machine wanted to be the astronauts too. Well, guess what? You don't have the training to be an astronaut. Sending you up there makes about as much sense as sending the actress Jodie Foster. The cost of the project is spiraling to more than a third of a trillion dollars. Who says numbers like this? A third of a trillion dollars? Have we verified this reporter isn't an alien? Fully one third of the candidates are American. Many international observers are asking why. While simultaneously ignoring the fact that American scientists are the ones who detected and deciphered the alien message in the first place, apparently. USA! USA! Different nations are being compensated in different ways, for example. I understand the news cut her off, and that's the point, but I can't believe a professional news broadcast edited it like this, to the point of almost saying, F you, Angela Bassett. Some of that criticism from scientists. One Nobel Prize winner recently noted his words. You don't need to know the name of said Nobel Prize winner. And also, he says women should stay in the kitchen. I don't know where that came from, but he won the Nobel, so f you. I told my dad that I didn't want him to go. Daddy, don't go. Extremely staged child actors ruin a movie scene about a candidate dropping out of the alien encounter discussion. And you travel to Vega at even close to the speed of light. When you come back... If you come back. You'll only be four years older, but over 50 years would have passed here on Earth. Yeah, it's exactly what happened in Interstellar. What, didn't see that movie? Oh, it's great. Great performances from Anne Hathaway, Matt Damon, Jessica Chastain, Casey Affleck, Michael Caine, scores of others I'm probably missing. And Matthew McConaughey and Jodie Foster, two great actors, somehow inadvertently create the most awkward kiss in film history. And were permitted only one question to ask of them, what would it be? How did you do it? I would ask them something super vague, like, how did you do it? And that would be the one question, and that's how I started the War of the Worlds. How did you evolve? How did you survive this technological adolescence without uh, destroying yourself? One question, Ellie. The man said one question. Do you believe in God? Jesus Christ. Also, this movie suggests the selection of our first contact astronauts sent to speak with aliens will be based on the candidate's religiousness, and the sin is for how much that feels like what would really happen. 95% of the world's population believes in a supreme being in one form or another. I'd like to see the data on that, or do you just believe that made-up stat? Here, this is how you close your hand. Also, movie's cheesy I'm giving you back the gift you gave me moment is further cheesified by said item being an on-the-nose f***ing actual compass and and backstabby McDoucherton gets the job over Jodie Foster because he pandered to the God-fearing congressman. And considering Jodie Foster ends up actually making the trip, that's a 30-minute waste of time you just watched in a two-and-a-half-hour movie. I'm giving out wings! David Drumlin is supervising the on-site portion of the test. We spoke with him earlier today. Hot Jesus, this guy's busy. He's the main astronaut on this mission. He's also supervising the spacecraft's construction, and he's giving regular media interviews. Hot religious Superman astronaut is giving a TV interview while holding a pair of underwear, and while the movie will ignore that, I cannot. Ellie, I know you must think this is all very unfair. What, you poaching my discovery and stealing all the glory? No, I'm totally cool with that. I just want to bone Matthew McConaughey. We only get one shot at this, let's get it right. We only get one shot at this cliche, not to mention that, like many movies that employ this cliche, there is actually a secret surprise second shot coming. Also, the NASA control room in Apollo 13 looked more technologically advanced than this bullshit. How in the ever-loving did this asshole get onto the launching pad? This guy must have connections, but all of his connections must have forgotten he looks like Jake Busey and therefore probably is a villain. Jake Busey waited until he was noticed before committing this act of terror. Relax, no one was killed during this blast except those who'd been previously marked by the screenwriter. I hated that devious rat bastard, but I'm still shocked he died so suddenly face. Bill Clinton has more screen time in this movie than he does in his own impeachment hearing video. Of course it's raining now, because the world knows that everything is sad. Yep, the Japanese made a completely separate machine costing billions of dollars, likely requiring hundreds of workers, totally in secret from any government somehow, despite the fact that everyone's using satellites on everyone. I think I'm gonna call this Machina X Machina. They still want an American to go, Doctor. Wanna take a ride? <laughs> Holy sh**! That I wanna take a ride is so perfectly insane in this delivery, I'm taking a sin off. Digital microchip, good for thousands of hours of recording. Recording what? Text? Audio? No f***ing way in hell you mean video, right? Right? Thank you. This f***ing guy. The reason I didn't vote for you to go, Ellie, was because I don't want to lose you. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Not only are you delivering information everyone already knew, but you're doing so at the expense of this movie ending. Here, this is how you close your hand. So they just decided to run this second machine with no test whatsoever this time, right? 
As long as Jake Busey is dead, this is safe, I guess. For a super long movie, all this shit taking way too super long. Copy that, 35%. Mechanical? We're good. How do you know, though? This is alien technology constructed by non-aliens and now monitored by non-aliens. So how can any call sign in this NASA bull respond we're good like they have any clue what's going on? Yep, they're launching her into space in a craft with unknown technology without a space helmet. Steve. Picking up tremendous EMI levels around the machine. Steve, we're approaching our abort limits. This movie's space bosses call each other by their first name, instead of saying like flight or launch or other NASA actually uses for missions. I hear her. I hear her. Barely, but she's, she's there. Okay, go! She says she's okay to go. I'm removing another sin because even though this has taken eight minutes, I'm totally riveted. The music by Alan Silvestri, the suspense Zemeckis creates, it's awesome. This is just a compass, but can I just sin this for being Matthew McConaughey again? I should have sent a poet. What, were they gonna allow the poet to bring his pencil and notepad on this mission so he could write some easily forgettable bull about something as cool as this? And also, can't you just be happy you won, Ellie? Drumlin's dead, so everybody wins. Ellie goes from her spacecraft to fetal position free-floating in space to walking on a beach on some alien planet. And even if she believes all this is real, she should be questioning how it's possible and why space travel has to include a fetal position free-floating in space portion. How's the green screen room, Ellie? I don't care what happens. Ellie should have some sort of skepticism that she was sent anywhere after this because this looks fake as did they shoot this movie in chronological order? Because they ran out of effects budget for this dad alien and the movie suffers for it. And thus here's the part that loses everybody. We spent two hours trying to get Ellie into space. We want to see something awesome. And she runs into her father, or rather an alien playing Halloween and dressed up as David Morse. I think everyone would have been happy with a bunch of aliens in a room full of confetti and a big congratulations Ellie sign strung up on a wall. But we got her dad. Dad's the alien. We thought this might make things easier for you. F***ing why? Also, even though we know you as a person of science and you'd probably like to see how things really are, we decided to make things easier for you and not to allow your camera to record shit. You contacted us. We were just listening. We have like 155 Ellies here who spent 15 years listening to the universe and just before funding fell through, we were saved by that Hitler message. We didn't build it. We don't know who did. The main purpose of bringing you here is to raise even more questions, so f*** you. You're capable of such beautiful dreams and such horrible nightmares. Jesus, we like entered a whole different quality of picture here, didn't we? But other people need to see what I've seen. They need to see... This is the way it's been done for billions of years. How frustrating! No wonder the universe is terrible. How long was I gone? The IPV dropped straight through the machine. You didn't go anywhere. Yep, the aliens spent all that time designing a ship for humans and sending instructions for them to contact the aliens only to f*** Ellie over and make all of Earth doubt the existence of aliens. Do I have that right? Because if so, f*** aliens, man. Although, f*** this movie's America for never even considering that alien space travel technology might actually also manipulate time. It's like Einstein never existed in this movie's universe or something. The entire country legit makes her feel crazy for suggesting she might actually have gone somewhere and come back faster than humans could detect. And that's f***ing nuts. Are you really gonna sit there and tell us we should just take this all on faith? Way to go, world. You on Ellie this whole movie, finally gave her a chance to do something awesome, then shit on her again. Even to the point that she's forced to defend her beliefs like a religious person would. Way to turn it around on such a vile person. Bravo. Thankfully for Ellie's frame of mind, shortly before embarking on a space journey no one believes happened, she fell in love with a man of faith who can now understand and comfort her better. Whenever you testify before Congress, they make you leave by the front door, in case thousands of people are out there protesting or supporting you. That's totally how it works and what happens. Zemeckis told his DP, I want every single crowd shot in this scene to prominently feature the color blue. When asked why, he replied, where is my latte? What do you believe? As a person of faith... Apparently tens of thousands of people decided to shut up so that Palmer could answer this reporter's question. The fact that it recorded static isn't what interests me. What interests me is that it recorded approximately 18 hours of it. How in the ever-loving f*** is this not discovered and disclosed during the hearings? This is actually the most preposterous thing this movie has suggested. What this overlong think piece sci fi film definitely needed to make it perfect was an 18 months later flash forward capper. Because the story wasn't already wrapped up nicely. It was. And the 18 months after Ellie's hearing are in no way uninteresting. They are. You can see over there we're building 45 brand new dishes. But we'll never build another one of those machines again. Even after the hard proof that I went somewhere for 18 hours, no funding necessary for that. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know. Ah, oh, you, Mars. So what? It's my life! Don't ever tell me what I can't do! If you build it, you will come. And Jimmy two times, who got that nickname because he said everything twice, like... Minimal protection. Minimal protection. 
I hope to see my friend and shake his hand. I hope the Pacific is as blue as it has been in my dreams. I hope. And the witness will address this court as judge or your honor. I'm quite certain I've earned it. The universe is a pretty big place. You just won't believe how vastly, hugely, mind-bogglingly big it is. I mean, you may think it's a long way down the street to the chemist, but that's just peanuts to space. Listen. And so on. But if it's so unimportant to her broadcast, why bother showing the dad walking behind to close it? I mean, goddamn, what gives? She has a pretty precise thread of contacts with her radio all around the Midwest, but somehow her farthest one yet goes all the way down to Florida? Baby Steps Radio, maybe Kentucky first before Florida. Young Ellie's genuine radio curiosity nearly turned this space program think piece into Frequency the Little Girl Edition. Guys, I'm getting a weird feeling that one of Sean Bean's characters has died here before. Matthew McConaughey shows up and somehow takes away from this movie. Palmer Joss. Palmer shakes Ellie. Ah, goddamn f you, audio editor slash foley artist. I guess 37 seconds of silence was to f me up with his sudden pterodactyl noise. And if so, bravo, in a world where bravo means go f yourself. Um, the moon is nowhere near that size relative to the Earth, but whatever you say, supposed serious space movie. Please hand with sticky Cracker Jack fingers. Red Jeep pulling into hot damn, are all the vehicles in this lot red Jeeps? What is this, Jurassic Park? Got my master's in divinity. Then I dropped out of seminary and went off and did some secular humanitarian work. Wait, you got a master's in divinity and then dropped out of school? Isn't that like quitting the American Ninja Warrior contest after beating the course? I mean, are you a Superman of God or not? This movie kind of needs you to pick a side. Young Ellie watches the space with her dad, while next door house arrest Shia LaBeouf is looking at them through binoculars and assessing their murderousness. There would be literally millions of civilizations out there. Well, if there wasn't, it'd be an awful waste of space. Huh, that's exactly what her dad said to her when she was little. And also, f*** you. He died when I was nine years old. I never got to know my mother. Then who took care of you after that? I don't think we hear of an uncle or cousin or anybody who then raised young Ellie during her formative years so that she could keep on this radio for alien life track she set for herself at such a young age. I'll get the medicine. Thankfully for this movie's tension meter, this asshole collapsed on the first floor while his dad medicine is up on the second floor. Uh, Hard to believe any alien life will contact us after hearing this jumbled mass of frequencies. Oh, you're the race that came up with We Built This City? Here's the keys to interstellar travel. Wow, the further out from Earth you go, the more nebula you encounter. And in such tight, consecutive formation, too. Entirely too much space travel. I have often thought the entire universe somehow existed in Jenna Malone's head. One of the most infuriating, meaningless movie things ever is her dad moving behind her to fully close the door. Why was the door ajar? Why would Ellie, a presumably smart girl, even begin audio recording without checking all the exits? 